Welcome back everyone. This is Jeffrey Reynolds from Reynolds Runabout. Um, this episode is going to be about the history of this boat, the 1957 14 foot Wondercraft built in Holland, Michigan by Clyde Paul with the Paul Manufacturing Company. Very few were built. This is one of two that was built with a wood deck and a rear hatch for access. And I will be giving you a photograph journey because I started taking prints in 2002 when I bought this boat and didn't have video capabilities. So what I'll do is I'll give you a slideshow with narration to bring you up to date. And then in the next episode, I will bring you up to date with the video portion of what I've been doing and where I'm going with this project. In 1954, Clyde Paul of Holland, Michigan, teamed up with his father to build the first Wondercraft boats under the Paul Manufacturing name. Here's an example of a fiberglass boat with a wood deck laid on in parts before assembly and the finished model. Paul and his father also built fiberglass boats, both deck and hulls. This is the boat I own, a wood deck version with a fiberglass hull as I found it in 2002. As you can see, it had spent many years out in the weather before being rescued by a local boat collector and stored in his dry barn. This is where I saw it after he called me, knowing that my interest in the Wondercraft boats had been um, piqued by uh, the local boat builder, Jason Petrulia, who had built the original plug and mold for these boats. I was thankful that we had enough of the original boat still intact, even though much of the interior had collapsed into the bilge. It still gave me um, a chance to put together what I knew the boat must have looked like without any photographs. The archaeologist in me found this really fun, as it was an interesting way of putting a boat back together uh, from what you found. Here's some shots of the interior as I found it. Again, much of it collapsed. This is what's left of the rear deck bilge area where the gas tank and battery would have been located. The first five inches of the deck were wrapped from the hull on top of the deck, attached and then painted to look like plywood. Some of the seat backs had been left intact, but sitting on what used to be the old bench support, so that gave me a good start. Some of the original interior areas had been left, the vinyl, so that gave me a good idea about the colors. Much of the gunnel area where the running rigging had been run was made from uh, very thin plywood and did not hold up. I was thrilled to see that the dashboard was still intact, so I knew exactly how it looked and some of the instruments and steering wheel locations. I quickly realized I would be changing the amount of hardware on the deck after seeing an overabundance from the original. Here I start to deconstruct the deck and work my way down to the bilge in a systematic way of figuring out what the boat looked like originally, measuring everything I did and taking note of the, of the materials so that I could either try to replicate or improve. 
Here you see the lightweight pine uh, deck beams. Notice how the deck beams are laid on top of an inner plywood for support, and that was it. It didn't take me long to remove the thin plywood that had rot rotted and was just barely hanging on and quickly got into the hull area. First, I removed what appeared to be a carpet strip type thing off the edge of the boat, which would have served as a rub rail. Here, I started investigating the top of the gunnel to see if there was any structural support there that I could use or save. In the end, most of this was removed and I left it right down to a flap of fiberglass from the hull. Here's a nice shot of the deck just before I took the beams out. Here I realized how much of a can of worms I had purchased and what sort of work I had ahead. Is the old wiring and things that had to be removed from the internal areas. Here's the uh, foot plate just up before I cleared out the bilge. At this point, I simply cleaned it up with a broom until removing the stringers later. Whatever parts of the original seat supports that I could salvage, I uh, removed carefully uh, for pattering later. Now finished with cleaning out the inside of the hole, I moved to the exterior. There I removed the two wooden splash rails and metal and kept one for patterning later. Then I took the boat outside, flipped it over, and gave it a good wash. After that, I brought the boat back into my shop, flipped it back over, and started on removing the inside wood stringers. I used a circular saw, an oscillating saw, a sawzall, a very large chisel, and a hammer to do most of the work before starting to grind away the uh, rough fiberglass around the original stringers with an angle grinder. I next started on the transom by removing all the rotten wood down to the outside fiberglass skin and retaining that for shape and to make a pattern. Once the pattern was made using rosin paper, I uh, cut two sheets of BS 1088 uh, marine plywood and sandwiched them together with a layer of fiberglass and resin in between to form my new transom. With clamps and screws, I was able to put them together very tightly. And then I did the same against the inside fiberglass that was left on the outside of the transom with clamps and, and screws to give it a good tight fit between the fiberglass and the new resin. I then used fiberglass roving and resin to tab the new transom to the existing hull. Once I made the new hardwood stringers, I did the same type of tabbing to the hull, also by bedding the new wood to the bottom of the hull with uh, thickened epoxy. At this time, I also added an extra layer of roving on the bottom to strengthen the center of the hull. Then I smoothed the whole hull using a orbital sander and 60 grit to give it a smooth finish before um, sweeping it out, uh, cleaning it with acetone to give the fiberglass some grip to the new bilge paint, which I then placed in the boat. 
then I was on to making new parts for the deck, uh, dashboard beams using what I could use from the original parts, including what was left of the original rare deck hatch. In addition to replacing the old wood with new mahogany instead of pine, I also added longitudinal frames to strengthen those beams from the bow to the dashboard. I also strengthened the aft area around the hatch. Then I started reproducing the parts that were found inside the boat, like the plywood floors and um, seat supports. About this time, the original builder, Clyde Paul, stopped by for a visit. I then turned my attention to fixing the outside of the hull and preparing for paint. I started by fixing the holes I had placed in the back of the boat when putting on the new transom. During the sanding process, I wore a Tyvek suit, a dust mask, sometimes a hood, and safety glasses to protect myself. During the sanding process, it didn't take me long to find lots of scars on the hull, both from use and from osmosis, which produced these blisters that I found all over the boat and had to be repaired from sanding using epoxy filler, sanding again, uh, more epoxy filler as I kept fairing towards a fine finish. I said it allowed me to apply primer, more sanding, more fairing, and more primer. After achieving this stage, we added black paint as well at a local auto shop. And then unfortunately other projects intervened and life and it went into storage for several years. In 2018, I brought the boat out of storage and back into my shop after being stored since 2006. Thankfully, a lot of the boat was still in good shape after 12 years, and I started to work on the interior again as I had left it, including moving the steering wheel from the right to the left side and then adding a shifter to the floor. Making deck patterns out of cardboard before cutting the expensive plywood. I also took this opportunity to reinstall the running gear pulleys when the deck was off, as well as trying out the new hardware placement on the future new deck. Next, I put the rough cut plywood on the deck and marked it from underneath to get a custom fit for installation. It was so nice seeing plywood go back on the boat with the interior in place and the boat starting to look like a boat again. After dry fitting every part, I began the process of either sealing, staining, or painting the parts before putting them back in place. I saved the varnishing process for the last step in the boat restoration, since I knew there would be some dings and mars along the line. I cut my own bungs for the deck, as well as painting the interior floor panels. Lastly, I had a local custom upholster add the orange and white upholstery that I always looked forward to seeing. I hope you enjoyed the uh, history slideshow, um, and we'll come back next week for some updated work and footage of how the boat project is now going in 2022. Make sure to subscribe and like, and I'll see you next week.